how to mind map effectively, how to mind map your life, your shopping list, and anything else. Let's do this. Hey, it's Ozzy here talking about how to create a mind map. A lot of people are asking, how do you make a mind map? So let's dive in. The first question really is, what is a mind map? A mind map is a collection of thoughts. Now at this point, you could say, well, that's the same as a to-do list, and in a way it is. But here's the difference. A to-do list, or any type of list, is a linear thought process. Every item comes after another item. And here's the thing, we don't think in a linear fashion. Our thoughts are more like explosions of thoughts branching out in every way. And that's where mind mapping comes in. Mind maps are usually a better way to capture thoughts and the term mind mapping itself means to map your mind, to map your thoughts. So that's the theory over with. Now let's get on with the action. Okay, so here I have a blank screen. This represents a blank piece of paper. By the way, you can mind map on paper or you can mind map using a tool and I'll talk about that later in this video. I use both methods, by the way, if I want to capture some thoughts, I'll start mind mapping on paper, but the only drawback is that I change my mind very often and I end up crossing out a lot of things on the piece of paper and that's where software makes this process a lot easier. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's step back and look at the action. We start by drawing a shape in the middle of the paper. Now you could draw a circle, but keep in mind that we have to write inside these shapes, so a circle is not really the best shape. I stick to this shape. Now this is going to be our central topic. So let's call it the thing. This is the thing that we want to mind map about. Okay, so now that you have your central topic down, you just let your mind do its thing. Let the thoughts come and write down all the thoughts that are related to the thing. So let's say for example, you needed to go and buy some clothes. Clothes shopping would be the thing, that would be the central topic. Your mind would then fill up with thoughts about all the things you need to buy. For example, you might think jeans, a t-shirt, shoes, a jacket, and so on. Those are the thoughts that we want to capture at this stage. So in our example, I have the thing, which is what we're mind mapping about. So I'm going to draw another shape, and I'm going to call that area one. Area meaning area or aspect of the thing. So if this was about clothes shopping, this first shape could be jeans. Then I'm going to draw another shape to capture my next thought. This one, for example, could be t-shirt. Then I'm going to capture the next thought. Let's say this one is shoes. And I'm going to repeat the process as many times as I need to. Every time a thought pops into my head about the thing that I'm trying to achieve, I'm going to record it on my piece of paper. When you have all your thoughts in front of you, just link them. Everything is linked or branching out from the thing. Next, we're going to think about each area and see what thoughts come up. So for example, if area one was jeans, then maybe we want to buy a pair of black jeans and a pair of blue jeans. So I would draw two shapes and I would write in there blue jeans, black jeans. I'm writing item and area here just to build a template to demonstrate that this can be used for anything. Then you just repeat the process for every thought. And what you're doing here is you are creating sub thoughts or sub areas of those main areas. And of course you link them all together because all those thoughts are linked. And when you run out of thoughts, then you have your mind map completed. And you can see the difference between a mind map and a to-do list. When you create a to-do list or a list of any sort, you are writing in a linear process, but your thoughts are not linear. The whole point of mind mapping is that you don't lose any of those thoughts. You can capture them quickly by simply adding that thought to the corresponding area or category. And this is why mind mapping is very effective. So let's look at a practical example now. Let's see how to mind map your life. So once again, we're going to start with a central topic. And since you're going to map out your life, then my life would be a good name for the central topic. Now, to walk you through the thought process, imagine that you want to map out the rest of your life, or you want to at least create a mind map that encapsulates where you want to go with your life in the next few years. Remember, it's all about capturing those thoughts. So to start with, we'll create a bubble called career. So let's use the term career loosely here. This is either you working for somebody else or you working for yourself. Next, we'll draw a bubble for relationships. 
and next we'll draw a bubble for money. Now note that these are not in any particular order. With a mind map, there is no up or down and there is no left or right. Just like the thoughts in your head, they don't usually have a beginning and an end. So let's go ahead and draw another shape for goals and another one for travel and another one for health. So all these bubbles represent different aspects of your life that you want to map out. Each one is as important as the next. Okay, so next we're going to link all those thoughts. And next we're going to focus on one of the bubbles. Let's say, for example, career. And we're going to let the mind do its thing. And your job is simply to sit still, listen, and capture those thoughts as they come out. And you do that for each one of these bubbles. And by the way, these bubbles in mind mapping terms are usually called nodes. Okay, so let's go ahead and capture some thoughts. You can see that on the career, I have come up with training and jobs. This is an example, of course, but let's say somebody wanted to have a career and the thought process could have been, I need to get some training first and then I need to start applying for jobs. And that's what that represents. Then for relationships, we can have love and friends. Then for money, we can have debt and savings. And of course, you can add as many nodes or sub nodes as you want. For example, on the money, you could have investments and on the debt, you could list all the types of debt that you have. And if you choose to work with your mind map on an ongoing basis, you can actually cross out those bubbles as and when you accomplish them. For goals, I added two goals. You can add as many as you want and you can break down those goals into as many nodes or sub nodes as you want. For travel, I added two nodes this year and next year. You may be more focused on travel, so this may be a bigger node for you. Then for health, I added two things, diet and exercise. You'll note that I've added two examples for each main node. And that is just to show you how to create a mind map, an effective mind map, and keep it simple at the same time. But of course, you can focus on any of those areas or those nodes, like training, for example, and ask yourself, what types of training do I want or do I need? And you can expand that node into a lot more nodes. Your mind map really is infinite. You can keep going, mapping out your thoughts for as long as you want. Now let's look at one final practical example. Let's wipe this out and start with our shape and call this one shop. I wanted to do this example to really show the difference between a mind map versus a to-do list. So let's use an example shopping list to create our mind map. Here you'll see fruit, veg, dairy, frozen, meat and bakery. Now what we're doing here is we are separating the categories of food that we want to buy. It's very annoying to find items on your shopping list that are at the other end of the supermarket where you were two minutes ago. So creating a mind map instead of a to-do list will help you deal with that. So following the process we looked at before, you would think about what kinds of fruit you want to buy, what kinds of veg, what kinds of dairy, etc. and capture all those thoughts like this. So here we have apples and bananas for fruit, tomatoes and onions for veg, cheese and yogurt for dairy, and so on. You get the point. And you can see why mind mapping is an effective way to manage and map out your thoughts, whether you're mapping out your life or your shopping list or anything else. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, you can use software to create your mind maps. There are plenty of mind mapping tools, and I talk about a lot of them in my channel. On that note, if you're interested on tools that help you become more effective and tools that help you succeed online, then please subscribe to the channel and that way you don't miss any of these great tools. And if you're interested in exploring mind mapping tools, many of which are free or come with a free plan, then check out the videos that you see on your screen right now or click the links in the description below this video. And remember, take it easy and I shall catch you in the next video.